Moon Knight Episode 3 is now available on Disney+. Plus. And guys, if you have not been listening to my advice on the previous episode reviews, you might want to go check out Moon Knight. I mean, Oscar Isaac is right there delivering a great performance week after week. We are halfway through this season or show. Don't really know if it's going to be picked up for a second season or not. Could be. I don't know. But we have three episodes left of what was announced. Are we going to get this new personality amongst Mark Spector and Stephen Grant? Are we going to see a showdown of the Egyptian gods? I don't really know until Wednesday episode drops, so stay tuned. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to The Heads Project. I'm John Rodalaza, and today we're going to be reviewing and spoiling Moon Knight Episode 3. So if you have not seen the episode yet and are not caught up with the show, you might want to click off the video and go do that. Mark Spector is now in Egypt. He just kind of vanished and went all the way to Egypt, looks out the window, there's pyramids there, it looks beautiful, even though it's 99% CGI, probably. Unlike the previous episodes where we were following Stephen Grant for the majority of the time, someone who didn't know a lick of what was going on. He had no idea why he was seeing this crow creature with a floating skull head. He has no idea why his reflections in the mirror are talking to him in a different accent. He has no idea what the f is going on. Now we're following Mark Spector because at the end of the last episode, Stephen gave the control, gave the body over to Mark, and now Mark took over, became Moon Knight, and afterwards, he didn't give it back to, to Stephen. Now it's Mark in the body, and so Mark went to Egypt. And in here, for the majority of the episode, we're now following Mark, this character that we really didn't know anything about until he would talk to him in the reflections and pop out as Moon Knight. As far as we're concerned, the hooded Moon Knight has always been Mark Spector. The one in the suit that we saw last episode was uh, Stephen Grant's version of what he keeps seeing in his head, you know? Just the one episode we've gotten so far, maybe it's because we have a little bit more time with Stephen Grant, but I don't know, I just, I found Stephen Grant to be more compelling and Mark Spector just seems to have like this know-it-all nature about him even though he doesn't like there's scenes where him and his wife Layla are trying to figure out this constellation thing on this cloth and he doesn't know what the hell he's looking at so he's like Ugh, damn it and she's like just just bring Steven out he knows this stuff so we do get some back and forth with Steven and Mark which is great you know it does come across as he's talking to himself to other people so that's that's very fun. Maybe we're gonna get a reveal that he's more crazy than we think. I don't know. Maybe there's a third person. They have been teasing that, though. We see in this first episode... Uh, some bits where Mark is actually blacking out, you know, his eyes kind of flutter and it zooms in on his face and then it zooms back out and then he's somewhere else and he just did something. Very reminiscent to when Stephen Grant was blacking out in the first episode and he was, like, he would pop out of the blackout and there's pe dead people around him like, did I just do that? No, that was Mark doing that. But it's happening to Mark and the only person that we know that are, that's inside the body and locked up is Stephen Grant. And Stephen wouldn't do that, right? So who's doing it? <laughs> who's doing it? I don't think it can be Khonshu. No one can see him except Mark and Stephen. So it's got to be a third personality. And I have no idea who that could possibly be. I know there's another one in the comic books. What is it? Uh... Jake Lockley. It's very intriguing now. Now we're getting some mystery with Mark Spector, who we kind of assumed knew everything about what was going on with Moon Knight and Khonshu, but nah, dude, there's even something deep internally with Mark and Steven. Whoever he truly is, we don't know, man. And there's some secret here that even Layla doesn't know. Layla, I guess, was very unfamiliar with the concept of Mark having this alter ego of Stephen Grant. She had no idea about that. Maybe he created Stephen Grant in his subconscious after he met Layla. I don't I have no idea. I'm just I'm just spitballing, speculating, predicting. It's getting my mind racing. I'm like, dude, this is intriguing, dude. It's it's going a little deeper in my opinion than uh, Split did. You know, Split with uh, James McAvoy. Uh great film. I love that movie, dude. Um don't like the sequel. Anyway, so <laughs> I I really really like that concept. Um only they're reducing it down to two characters maybe three personalities within mark specter and stephen grant and a third potential person uh the guy from split had like 20 this very well seems like two people two beings 
who look identical, <laughs> looking at each other and and communicating, and it's it's creepy. I don't know. It's creepy, dude. As someone who we were following Stephen Grant for the first two episodes, and now he's locked in there, I feel for him, man. And I want him to have his own life. I want him to get away from all this, because man, does he not want to be there? There's this pretty awesome showdown towards the end of the episode that does give us a lot more Moon Knight. Probably the most Moon Knight we've seen so far in any of these episodes. And hey, you know me. I love me that design. And the more you show it to me, the more I smile. <laughs> so it was really cool to see Moon Knight throw down. They wanted to see this guy's uh, constellation napkin and he was just kind of riding a horse with a robe on. They're clearly up to no good and they didn't like that Mark was taking so long with the constellation napkin and whatever the hell he was looking at after that. They started to point the guns. He obviously robes up in his Moon Knight gear and starts beating the piss out of everybody, dude. Starts throwing these moon rings around, like these crescent-shaped batarangs. They're called moon rings, don't you know? There's so many uh, comparisons between Moon Knight and Batman. I mean, he's he's got bat-shaped things. Moon Knight has crescent moon shaped things like his cape is a crescent moon his throwing knives are freaking crescent moons like oh man but i i love it dude <laughs> i love it it works for marvel and we do get some gritty action in here dude it's it's pretty cl uh quick cut you know it's not showing you the knife going through him and then blood just gushing out no it's not doing that but we get a quick shot of a crescent uh, moon orang going right through a dude's throat like for a split second ting, and then it cuts to something else for, I, I am not joking you can go watch the episode and then be sure to come back to watch the rest of my review but there uh, uh, one of those definitely goes and sticks right into a dude's neck there was a point in the episode where Kanchu put the moon i believe right up in front of the sun to kind of give Ethan Hawke's character. I can someone tell me down below what his name is. I I'm probably hearing it every episode, and it's just slipping my mind. So if someone wants to let me know, that'd be great. I'd appreciate that. But he put the moon in front of the sun. It looked like to send a message, you know, with the the, the eclipse and whatnot. And he was just like, ignore it, keep digging. While they're all staring at him, I'm like you guys are gonna go blind. The same amount of sun and radiation is coming from the eclipse, and it's gonna blind you. It's still gonna blind you. I learned that in uh, in the science class. Yeah. But because Kanchu did that and he sent the warning to Ethan Hawke and his crew, he disobeyed the laws of Egyptian gods, I think? So the Egyptian gods met up in a pyramid. They brought in Mark Spector to question him, be like, yo, what up with your boy? Put him in check. Essentially, Kanchu was accusing Ethan Hawke. You know, he was putting him on the spot. So then he's brought in. It's like a little jury session, you know, where he's kind of being accused and Mark is trying to plead his case, but he's not doing a good job because Kanchu is taking over his body to just spit out all these nonsensical words. It, I mean, it was just annoying. Then Ethan Hawke puts Kanchu on the spot saying, he took over this person to be his avatar, this person who's who has a, an identity disorder. He's he's literally got um, identification under this name and then identification under Steven and Mark. It's just confusing. He doesn't even know who he is, which then makes me think, oh boy, are we gonna get some, some sort of twist? I don't know, I don't know, dude. I've been hearing some rumors that there might be a twist in, in episode four. I don't know, but the way it's going now, when even Ethan Hogg is pointing this out, and now Mark doesn't even know what he's doing when he blacks out, Steven doesn't even know what's happening when he's locked in the body and Mark's blacking out, like, nobody knows. Whoever this person really is, is royally messed up. Maybe, maybe that's what we will get revealed to us in the next episode. We'll get revealed who this original person is or maybe it's supposed to be mark specter i have no idea dude i've never read a moon knight comic so let me know down below <laughs> what you think i'm really digging this show though and i hope that the last three episodes kick it up a notch and and just just keep going dude just be the best you can be oh yeah guys sorry last minute uh throw in to the review i totally forgot to talk about a lot of things towards the end. So Kanchu abuses his power again. He starts to change the stars and the constellation so they can match that specific day on the the constellation napkin. You know that 
is apparently 2,000 years ago or something like that. He just straight up puts his hands in the sky and just starts turning back time, essentially. Turning back the stars to give him that vision of what it was like, what, 2,000 years ago. And everybody saw it. There was people immediately in, in the Egyptian uh, town or whatever getting out of their cars, staring up in the sky. So you got to imagine everyone in the world saw that. Maybe Dr. Strange saw it. Some other gods saw it. Definitely the gods who they were, you know, putting Kanchu on trial for scenes ago saw that. So they all gathered in a circle and took Kanchu prisoner. They put him in like a statue, it looks like. So Mark Spector and Stephen Grant don't have the power anymore of Moon Knight at the moment, or the power of Kanchu. So what what's happening? What what are they gonna do in that last th- that next episode, episode four? I have no idea, but I'm still excited for it. That whole scene, that shot of them moving the stars looked really dope. But yeah, I am a little puzzled that yeah, I didn't even put together that no, he's got no powers now. So hopefully they resolve that quickly because we were just getting to some really dope Moon Knight action and. Don't tell me you're gonna take it away from us now. <laughs> That's my review for Moon Knight episode three, guys. So let me know down below, what did you think of it? Leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you're new. Be on the lookout for my spoiler talk for Sonic the Hedgehog 2. There was just so much going on in that film, I had to talk about the nitty gritty spoilers. So stick around because there is more to come.